the rugby, well, it's the issue of scalping has been a big issue in the news. First, like, who, um, who did the rugby uh, at the Westpac um, Stadium on Wednesday, uh, the, 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 the weekend? Paul? Saturday. Saturday. I, no, I didn't make it, but I agree, scalping is a challenge, but... You know, I think there, there are two sides to this, and what if you buy a What are the two sides? Well, what if you buy a ticket for a friend or for a family member, they fall ill, you want to give it to someone else. So whatever rules you have, ha actually have to balance It's just not out. fair, though, is it, Denise? You don't have to inflate the prices, though, to make a, a dollar from it. Oh, I'm not defending scalpers. And look, if there is a problem with the regime, um, I'm going to cop out and say it was bought in, in 2007 by the last lot, so All maybe right. it does All need right, another Phil. lot. Well, and of course, you're, you're the, uh, your, your party is the, scal the scalping Trevor. party, isn't it? Because you had uh, Trevor Mell out there uh, selling his tickets on Trade Me. I'm surprised, quite frankly, that Paul Foster Bell is uh, not defending scalping because it's exactly the kind of short-term speculative activity that this, that this government <laughs> Here is we act go actively encouraging in the Auckland housing market. He's got a point, Paul. <laughs> He's got a point, Paul. Look, there are, there are uh, means for uh, events to apply for that status of an international event, and Super Rugby would be eligible. The organisers didn't choose to. It clearly was a problem, but I think the upside is it was a great thing that we had such demand for those tickets and so many people coming to Wellington. So are, you, are you trying to say that markets should decide? I mean, basically, it's yeah. the entrepreneurial spirit that if you want to actually buy tickets ahead of time and sell them for four times the value, you can. Well, the law as it currently stands, which was brought in in 2007, says exactly that. Organisers oh, can apply everything's for... Everything's Labour's fault. Organisers can apply going? for major well, event status. Well, would you like to change it? Would you like to change it? Well, look, I think it needs to be balanced against other, other things, and maybe it is up to the companies to decide whether they want to limit it to two or four tickets per sale. And is that a no or a yes, Paul? I don't have a strong personal opinion on it. All right. Mm. Denise? Uh, I think actually the industry should be doing a lot more about it. Like we should get, uh, Trade Me should be getting together with music promoters and organisations and the sporting organisations and sort of flesh out some guidelines around, around ticket sales so that you can actually eliminate. Or well, they can find the solutions to scalping. But I'm not, sure, I'm not sure about the legislation for it because we don't really have a clear idea how widespread it is. But I agree with you, when the prices get inflated so that ordinary people can't get to um, see the rugby and that, you're basically that's, creating that's a more elitist sport. All right, OK, we'll come back to you guys, but let's go to Damien. Hello, I've got a couple of guests with me, actually. Um, now, I've got James Nakise. Oh, are you coming up, James? I've got John, we're going to talk to you both at the same time, I think. John Holden, Chairman of the Maris and Pats uh, Rugby Football Union and Club. How are you? Yeah, I'm great, thanks. Good. Now, um, I want to, s your club members, uh, people miss out on these tickets to the big games, like the one that we just had on the weekend, because of scalping? That's correct, yes. We, could, we were allocated 100 tickets and we could have uh, probably sold about 10 times that number. Or wow. you could have sold those 100 for 10 times the price. We could have done, but our role is to support grassroots rugby. That's uh, the players that play at uh, the grassroots and the supporters that come along every Saturday, and we, we wouldn't do that. Would you like to see a law change to stop people selling tickets for you know inflated prices? Look, I think a law change could be a pretty hard thing to actually uh, draft and actually administer. I think the better way is for um, tickets to be allocated to the 14 rugby clubs that are in the Wellington Union and a greater number, and that would reduce the demand for scalping. So get people to, people have to rock up to the to the Maris and Pats, for instance, to buy their tickets? Or any other rugby club. Okay. Interesting. James, um, a comedian by trade, I understand, uh, selling tickets. Um, ever found your tickets being scalped on Trade Me? Uh, yeah, the comedy industry doesn't normally have that kind of problem in New Zealand, bro. Um, <laughs> We're not quite at the rugby levels yet uh, when it comes to ticket scalping. Uh, I, occasionally, my mum will try and sell on tickets that I give to her for free to come to one of my shows. But apart from that, <laughs> it's not really a massive issue. Would you? Would you? Um, have you ever bought from scalpers before? No, I haven't. I get really. Um, I get really weird on scalpers. I get really proud. Like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because like, I grew up uh, like with Marist rugby clubs and like we've got mates who are in the arts, but I get, I get really staunch when it comes to people trying to scalp. I'll get, I'll get right in the scalper's face if he like, tries and hits me up. But if I buy anything, you know, whether it be a, a, a famous New Zealand painting or a, or a car and it goes up in value and I, I want a part of it, or an Auckland house, you know, Wallace buys a bunch of them and, and, and <laughs> tries to sell them, you know, we're just, try, we're just making a profit. It's just the free market, isn't it? Well, you look at it, it is to a degree, but I think we also need to protect the, uh, the grassroots of the game and uh, support those that uh, don't actually get paid for it and by giving them tickets that they can actually afford. Um, on, a, on another topic, um, Samoa. 
you're from Samoa. You're the only one we could find in Wellington. So we got you along to talk about <laughs> talk about the uh, talk about the rugby. I'm from Newtown, so it's kind of similar to Samoa. <laughs> It's not actually a uh, well, uh, But how, what did you think today? Was it a, was it a big, big proud moment? Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, I, I like how everyone's been surprised that Samoa played well. It turns out, if you have home advantage, you will play better. Uh, <laughs> this is actually, I don't know if you know, but he's talking about grassroots. Samoa has had 60 All Blacks. There's been 60 uh, Samoa All Blacks. This is the first time in only, uh, that they've ever played in Samoa and only the sixth game that uh, New Zealand has ever played against Samoa. And I mean, we lost on points, but I'm pretty sure we won on concussions. I, 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 did, I did sort of think that in fairness, we were talking just before I saw it, in fairness, the all Blacks should have left all their Samoan players behind or given to, to Samoa. And then I thought, and actually, last time we tried like leaving certain races behind for an overseas tour, it didn't generally go down so well, did it? What did you think of the game today? Well, I actually haven't seen, I only caught a little bit of the blog on, um, on your Twitter that you were talking about before. A bit of the blog on the Twitter. That's the one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> grassroots rugby, Wallace. Indeed, a bit of the blog on the Twitter there. Hey, actually, hands up, anybody in the audience, who has bought from scalpers? Anybody bought from scalpers? I'm, I'll, I'll be interested. No, Fred, there? The, the, see, can you see the billboard? We always have we've, billboard, we've great got billboards, billboards up here. here. Do you know what? I actually got a, I got a call from a mate today saying, um, oh, I've got you one of those Madonna tickets. Do you want to buy it for your partner? And I said, yeah, sure, how much? He said, 500 bucks. And you know what? <laughs> that wasn't the scalping price. $500 <laughs> for a Madonna ticket. I hate to think what they're going for. What about you, Puck, tucked in back here? Hello. Hello. Have you ever bought or, bought or sold tickets for a profit? No. No? Would you consider it? Do you think it's bad? Do you think it's illegal? Or should be? I think it's bad, but I'd maybe do it. You would consider doing it? Maybe. Okay. What about you, sir? Bad, but you'd do it? Um, nah, I wouldn't. You wouldn't do it? Nah. Poor student, like someone comes up and offers you ten times the price for the latest block of jelly, jelly tip uh, chocolate, the last block in Wellington? Well, I have been trying to look for that, but... No, I've, I've got some I can sell you. We've got... Hey, Wallace, can we sell this man hundred bucks? Well, I <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, we can. afford it anyway, so... Okay, well, we'll ask around. If anyone wants to buy a well, uh, jelly tip chocolate, hundred bucks, we can get... Wallace, though. Thank you. Wallace? We can get this signed by Denise Roche, Paul Foster Bell and Phil Twyford. That's, a, that's amazing. There you go. <laughs> someone sculpt that, Damien Christie. What do you reckon? That, what, what would that go for? I reckon right now, is this, is this any good? Have you tried it? Don't know. Don't know. Um, Don't know. Yeah, well, we'll give it a go. Hey, I, I, what, before we go, we we'll talk about teachers. Uh, would you pay $500 to go and see Madonna? No, probably not. What about you, Paul? Not my sort of thing. What about mm. you, Phil? Do you mean the rock star or the real Madonna? Oh, God, okay. 